Welcome to the first episode of College Corner for 2021. The government has kept us out of the office, but they haven't kept me out of the sports book. I've bet on over 500 college basketball games, and you guys can fucking follow me on Action Network to see all of those. But we're back for football. FCS football is back, and never before have we been blessed with all year college football. So here I am, going to give you winners and help you capitalize on these money making opportunities. Now we go. Like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Download the Owner's Box mobile app or head over to ownersbox.com to play weekly fantasy sports today. Thank you. Full disclosure, I don't watch that much FCS football. Everyone doesn't really watch that much. You know, it's always been behind FBS football in the fall, but now it's the springtime. So, been in the lab for you guys. Cooked up, I think, nine plays for this weekend. Not a huge slate. It was exciting. You know, you got some football on Saturday, Sunday, even Friday. Top five matchups, so you guys need to tune into that. First, James Madison versus Moorhead State. The James Madison Dukes. Let me read out some stats for you. The number four ranked team in the country. Returning only seven starters. Not great. But they're out for, like, they're out for revenge. Last year, well, 2019. It's going to be weird saying last year. They didn't really play last year, technically. But they lost in the national championship game. They're out for revenge, man. But here they're 43 and a half point favorites. That's like Alabama ter- territory. This one's tough. But Moorhead State was just five and seven last year. Sorry, 2019. They haven't had a winning season in five years. Last time they played James Madison won 80 to seven. I mean, the Dukes are out for revenge, man. They're gonna have another good year. They're in a deep playoff run, which is also the best part about FCS, is that playoffs. 43 and a half does seem a little bit ridiculous here. I don't think it's going to happen. They're going to cover this number easily. I think 43 and a half. It might as well sprinkle on the over. They scored 87 points last time. Why not? Next game, Tennessee Tech at Austin P. The Golden Eagles finished at 6-6 six and six last year. And, like, Austin P was pretty good as well. They, they played three games already this year. Like, I didn't see anyone else that has. They lost to Central Arkansas early. They got smoked by a bad Pittsburgh team and hung pretty well. Like, 55-20 to 20 with Cincinnati. So they're going to be, like, really ready to go to play a team, like, at their caliber, finally. They're not going to get shit-pumped by these D1 big Power 5 schools. They get to play fucking Tennessee Tech. So, I mean, last time they played, they won 58-21. They're only six-and-a-half-point favorites here. This is an easy spot for me to take Austin P. the Governors, minus six-and-a-half. Moving on, Southern Illinois at North Dakota. The Salukis, what a name of Southern Illinois. Great run offense. They lose their best rusher from last year, 1,500 yards. But they have two good backs coming back for them. North Dakota's, North Dakota's defensive line isn't great based on the research I've done. They're a young team, but like them being a young team makes them home underdogs. Last year, sorry, 2019. Fuck, that's going to kill me. 6-0 last year at the Alaris Center. So I'll be taking the Fighting Hawks. Fighting Sioux was an awesome name. I'm maybe insensitive but i love that name and that logo but they're the fighting hawks now plus two and a half at home riding that next Furman at western carolina i do not know shit about these football teams let me tell you i know they're both purple um Furman paladins are an awesome name and because i love the Furman paladins name so much i'm going to be taking the western carolina catamount plus 23 and a half and i expect them to lose by 21 so there we go that's some expert level insight for you guys next North Dakota State and Youngstown State the Penguins of Youngstown State North Dakota State Bison North Dakota State is the Alabama of FCS football undefeated year last year national championship Uh, they've won like four national championships in a row or something like that or in these five years they are an absolute fucking wagon they're at home in the Fargo Dome one of the toughest places to play in the FCS so I can't not ride with them it's like betting against Nick Saban you're just losing money at that point it's not smart to do minus 23 easy lay for me here taking it minus 23 and I'm going to sprinkle on the over as well at 52 points finally actually not finally I got two more plays for you Eastern Tennessee State the Buccaneers Sanford Bulldogs I just expect some ugly play from these two teams. Uh, returning a lot of players, both of them. The weather's going to be in the 20s or the 30s there. It's going to be ugly. I'm just going to ride an under here, kind of blind. Uh, but I think I'm still confident riding this blind. And finally, my final play, Eastern Illinois at Tennessee Martin. Eastern Illinois was possibly the worst football team in the history of the world last year. 1-11. Their quarterback is returning. And his completion percentage was under 50%. Uh, that's not good. 
anyone who's into numbers. That's really not good. Um, Skyhawks were seven and five. You're going against one and eleven team. Easy, easy for me to take. Tennessee Martin at home minus twelve and a half. That's it for me. Not a big episode. We're gonna get back into it. I'm gonna figure out a way to get you guys basketball plays, but follow me on Action Network because I'm ripping college basketball every single day. I love it. Thank you for tuning in. We'll be back for a big 2021.